so good. You're amazing. There's not a word in the dictionary that can describe your greatness. We just want to thank you today. But you chose us to wake up. You chose us to be here today. This divine appointment to worship you, to praise you, to lift up your name, Jesus. Because you're what it's all about. Pray for this service today, God. I pray that you just move freely. Let the let them be the blocking you in any way. Move freely through the aisles. Move freely through the pews. You know the needs of everyone here. Sit down next to them, God, and reach them where they're at. Start to lift the veil of their eyes of any disbelief that they may have. And show yourself to them. Your love and grace. Your perfectness. God, I pray for the people getting baptized today, coming to confess you as Lord and Savior. The change that you've already begun in their life. Be with the praise and worship. I know it's going to be beautiful. I expect it. Because you're working through them, God. Be with the message today. Let it penetrate our hearts, God. That it changes in our very core. That we can take what we hear, what we learn, and how you change us and apply it and use it to help someone else. Let us be servants of you, God, in obedience. Make a change in, in everybody's life that we come in contact with. Let's go out and love you first. Love our neighbors, ourselves, and make Jesus known in everything we say, everything we do. God, thank you for being so good. Your will be done in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 having a good day. It is a wonderful day to be in the house of the Lord. If I could just get everyone to hey, we got, get a little stretch in real quick. You know, stretch it out. Stretch it out. Leave your arms up real quick and I just everyone say, I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. Yes, one more time. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. See, that's what the three people that are coming up here to be baptized, that's what they're saying today. Is they're saying, I belong to Jesus. You know, it's important that we understand the, the, the salvation process and we understand where the baptism falls in that whole thing. The folks that are coming up to be baptized today already know Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. They've already come to, to allow Jesus into their heart. They've already been uh, endowed with the Holy Spirit and they've already been sealed. But what they're doing today is they are announcing it to the world. To the world, they're saying, I belong to Jesus, just like we did, just like we did a moment ago. So this is not something that their salvation is hinging on. This is something that we are commanded to do in order to let the world know where we stand. And if you think about our, our walk with Christ, this is just the beginning. That's what he's asked us to do. As we read through the, the, the letters of Paul, as we read the Gospels and we see how Jesus carried himself, as we read through the book of Revelation, as we read through the writings of of, of John, as we read through the, lighting, the writings of Peter and, and Matthew, what we see is we see that these men proclaim that they belong to Jesus. And that's what Jesus has asked us to do. He says, I will come and I will save you. I, I will save you. He saves us, okay? Their salvation is secure. But then he's like, I want you to proclaim me. I want you to proclaim me to the world. And I want the world to have no doubt who it is that you belong to. So this is the beginning of a journey for these three people. But it's a beautiful journey. It's a journey that's well worth it. It's a journey that is uh, full, of, uh, 
full of, of surprises. It's a journey that uh, is, is up and down. Um, but as long as we stay fixated and as long as we stay focused on Jesus Christ, we'll be able to work through these things. And um, so today, as they make their professions of faith, as they, they, they make their professions not only to Christ, but to you, remember that we all started somewhere. We all started somewhere. So we all have a part of this. We all have a part in this as far as getting them where they not only need to go, but where they desire to go. Because when you come to know Christ, your, your motivations change. But as motivations change, we need direction. We need instruction. We need all of those things. So, so this is a wonderful, and, and it's a day of celebration. It's a day that, uh, you know, there's, there's churches around this area and, and throughout the, the nation right now where they don't have a baptism today. And the same thing on days that we don't have a baptism. They might have a baptism. But we're, we, we're all celebrating together. This is a great day, not just for By His Blood Ministries and not just for these individuals. This is a great day for the body of Christ because three people are making their profession of faith today, here, and now. So if I could get Danielle, Cameron, and Hadley up to the front, please. I've got just a series of questions for you. Um, Pray y'all study. They're not multiple choice. Just kidding. I'm not kidding, really, because they're not multiple choice. It'd be kind of <laughs> cool if it was multiple choice, though. You know, then we'd really get to see people's hearts, right? <laughs> Come on down. You're good right there. All right. So, do you turn away from Satan and all spiritual forces of evil that rebel against God? Yes. Oh, that was good. I got chills right there. Woo. Do you turn away from all sinful desires that draw you away from fellowship with God? Yes. yes. Do you turn to Christ Jesus? Yes. Do you intend to be a faithful follower of Christ, serving him by obeying his word and showing his saving grace in your life? Yes. yes. And do you promise to devote yourself to the apostles' teachings, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to the prayers? Yes. yes. Praise God. Y'all are ready. Uh, whoever's going to be first. Yes. Give it up. <laughs> Guys, and, and you know, you know how I do this. Uh, those are the those are the questions that the first church came up with to ask people when when they were getting baptized. And the first church, man, they were great people. They really were. I mean, Jesus' brother was part of the first church. James, it's amazing. James, his whole life didn't even believe that Jesus was what he said he was. And then when Jesus died, he became one of the, the biggest followers. As a matter of fact, he was became a martyr for his brother. Isn't that nuts? Isn't that nuts? So. Um, but I'm not saying they left it incomplete, but I do think that there's a part that we need to share. Um, if everyone would please stand. Okay, guys, like I said from the pulpit, today they are making their profession of faith. We all started somewhere. We all started in different places. They're going to need instruction. They're going to need reproof. They're going to need to be corrected. They're going to need uh, to be lifted up. They're going to need support. And whose job is that? That is the congregation's job. It is our job to train them. It is not just my job as a pastor. It is our job as a congregation. So when they look at us, they should see Christ. And my question to you is, as a congregation, do we agree to train, to correct, to reproof, and to lift up these individuals so that they might be the best disciples that they can be for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? And if so, answer by saying we do. Yeah. Praise God. If y'all will remain standing for some praise and worship. Good morning. Let's start with the Waymaker. I know that y'all know this one. So we're going to start this off and when they are ready for baptism. It's not my Elton John spot. We're in the house of the Lord this morning. We show him gratitude and thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. So
Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. And again, we thank you for Hadley. And we thank you for the love that she has for you, Lord, and the way that she has received you. I pray that you be with her in all that she does, Lord. Allow her to be the best mother that, uh, that you design her to be, Lord. Allow her to be the, the best spouse that you design her to be, Lord. Allow her to work within her, her community and, and, and to raise attention to you, Lord. And, Lord, allow her to be the living proof that you are the answer. Lord, we, we know that there's difficult things going on in her life, but we pray that uh, your hand is upon her in all of these things, Lord. Let her not be discouraged. Let her remain motivated, knowing that not only do you have a plan, but you are the answer, Lord. Lord, keep her heart filled. Keep her strong. Allow her resilience to be uh, an inspiration to all. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. Amen. Okay. 
So, we're going to take this praise and worship time, and we're going to sing one song. We're going to sing this uh, Waymaker song. And what the Lord has put on my heart is, you know, when you come in, like Scott was already talking about, Like Scott was already talking about when these three people have given their heart over to the Lord, then what do you do? <laughs> so there is something to be said about instruction. And the Lord has been working with me about instruction. And praise and worship would be one of them. And so what I'd like for us to do, I'm going to give the guys parts. And we're going to give the ladies some parts. And we're going to sing together. Now, I'm already, I'm already, I can already see some of y'all, I don't sing. Well, then say it. Because I know that in the Word of God, I love it so much. Psalm 50 says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Amen. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. It doesn't, it doesn't say you got to sing to him. It just says praise to him. If that, if that does not mean sing to you, that's okay. But a praise to the Lord is required for everything that has breath. And so then we think about, well, what am I praising about? Well, Jesus, of course. But if we really want to think about it, we think what he did for us on the cross. He, he, he did the switcheroo on us. <laughs> and it wasn't the nails that was holding him up there in his, in his hands and his feet was his love for us and he had divine wrath happening to him so that we that accept him and follow him would not have to go through that isn't that a great god he is a wonderful god he is a wonderful counselor he's a mighty god he's an everlasting father he's the prince of peace and he switched that on us that we can live today and now in abundant living and then we also get a hope of knowing we get to see him face to face in eternity we don't have to be separated from him going forward he's made a way he is the way maker and so when we look at the cross an automatic explosion of gratitude and thanksgiving to the king of kings and the, and the maker of all things should come from us however that happens with you if you sing if you don't if you kind of sing and no you don't <laughs> it doesn't matter but everything that has breath praises the lord and so this one, what I'd like for us to do, we're going to work on this way maker. Everybody, we're going to stand up because this is the house of the Lord and we give him honor and glory. He is worthy and we show reverence to him. All right. Let me see. Let's, let's make this easy. You can go back to your seats later. Guys, I want you guys over here. Ladies, I want you ladies over here. That way I make it easy. Candace, I'm not going to put a mic in front of your face. She's looking at me like, please don't single me out. Relax, like Scott said, just raise your hands, shake the heebie-jeebies, okay. Okay, listen, ladies, look, they are outnumbering, but your voice better outshine. Let's see, let's do, just do a mic check. All the guys say, hey yo. Hey yo. Just the guys, just the guys, just the guys. Okay, all the ladies, all the ladies say, hey yo. Hey yo. Hey, uh, oh, we that was, won that one. That, that was pretty good. Do it again. Let's do it again. Okay. All the guys say, hey Hello. Hey now y'all better sing like that. I'm gonna come and get you. I'm gonna I will, I will, I will. You've already raised the standard, so here we go. All the ladies say, hey Hey Okay, I think this is gonna work. Alright, so y'all kinda know, already know the words to this. Guys, it goes. Richie, hit, hit me with some music so I don't all like to. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this is your part. When I cut you off, ladies, you get to the next part, okay? Yep. Let's see how it goes. You are the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. It's not My God, that is who you are. Woo! Guys! You are the way maker, miracle worker. Is who you 
amount of gratitude and thanksgiving and then we say well then what's happening next so 
the first instruction that I give today that the Lord gives from his word. It's his. Psalm 50, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. He is worthy of it. He deserves it. And whatever we're going through, all situations, let's get in our word and, and know what his instructions are. Y'all be blessed. Thank y'all. Thank Y'all sounded awesome, by the way. Y'all did incredible. Give yourselves a round of applause. See, but that's you know what you know what made that you know what made that easy. Like, wasn't that easier than like praise and worship? What made it easier was everyone was engaged and everyone was doing it. And you didn't have to worry about oh, am I the only one standing up or am I the only one singing? Well, when we're doing praise and worship, so what? Who cares? If you're the only one up and singing, praise God. He's hearing you loud and clear. You're bringing a beautiful noise to his ear. So that's what it should be like in praise and worship. Don't worry about the people next to you. It's, it's kind of like life. If you're worried about what your neighbor's doing all the time, you're never going to accomplish anything in your own life. So, you know, when it's time to praise, when you're running praise, you stand up and you praise. Let you be the example for your neighbor as opposed to the neighbor being the example for you. So uh, I'm proud of y'all. Y'all did very well. And it sounded beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. We might just have a choir. We might just call everyone up on stage. Have y'all ever been to a church like that? Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Nikki's, uh, Nikki's uncle or someone. Raised his hand. Someone. <laughs> so, I don't know what they are. Like Johnny Flannery. How are they related to y'all? Cousins? Yeah. Cousins? Okay. Yeah, their cousins' church are like, all right, it's time for praise and worship. And every single person in the church gets up and walks up on stage. I'm like, what? <laughs> Thing is, they all come out and they've all got guitars and banjos and harmonicas and everything else. But uh, but they play. Hey, they they can sing. They do it. They're praising more school on point. So and we'll be there. We'll get there. So um, if I could have these two lovely ladies come up to the front and help me with offering today. Hey, girl. Yes, as we know, the offering is uh, not necessarily a hundred percent what comes out of your pocket. It's just as much tied to what comes out of your heart and what comes out of your soul. What is uh, what is the Lord poured into you this week? What is it that you're being called to put back into God's kingdom? Because you know, uh, I'll use I'll use Cameron as an example. Cameron doesn't even know this, but you know, the Lord's given him a a, a personality that just brings a smile to my face. I mean, he came in today and I smiled immediately. It was like, there's Cameron. All right, praise God. So he brought joy to me. The Lord put joy in him so that he could share his joy with me. What does the Lord put in you to share with God's kingdom? And that's what I want us to think about during our, our offering today, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come into this time of offering, I thank you. We give you our praise. We give you our, our hearts. And Lord, we give you the glory. Uh, let us be uh, cognizant of the things that we are putting into your kingdom, Lord. And let us always be cognizant of the things that we receive while we're, we're, we're able to be in your kingdom, Lord. Lord, this is a joyous occasion. We, we can never pay you back, but we can, we can give to our neighbor. We can give to your kingdom. And, and Lord, thank you for giving us the power to do so. Let us do this cheerfully and let us do this uh, as a, as a, as a uh, just as a thank you to you. Jesus precious holy name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Children, you may go over to, oh, well, with Grammy T. T. Over there on the side. Come on, kids. All right, guys. Well, this is what we've got coming up this week. Uh, as usual, on Tuesday and Thursday, we have the high set class. Uh, getting you prepared to take the, the test. You get your high school diploma. You get your high school diploma. And you opens up some doors for college. Um, best thing about it is it's 100% free of charge. So, you know, if the Lord has laid it on your heart to get that education, I'm telling you, this is an opportunity. Free education. Free education. That's that's hard to find in this world today. So, uh, it is an opportunity to get your uh, diploma and to do that uh, uh, as quickly and, and painlessly as possible. Uh, also on Tuesday and Thursday at 7 o'clock, we have uh, No Need to Fear uh, NA meeting downstairs. And uh, again, a great group, great, great group of guys and gals. And uh, 
if you're if you're looking for a meeting, a twelve step that you need, uh, you know that you need or, or that you require, whatever I don't know. Um, by all means, try it. Uh, it's a it's a large group. It's usually around forty to fifty people. So uh, you know a lot of a lot of folks sharing the same afflictions. Um, on Wednesday we have Holy Hump Day. Nikki, don't leave. We have Ho Holy Hump Day at six o'clock. At six o'clock we prepare a meal. I don't know. I'm sorry. Just get a, a major. Hamburger helper. Hamburger helper. No, no. I will do. I don't know. It'll be so good. I don't know. Eggs Benedict with crab meat. <laughs> T-bone steaks. Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. All right. So we'll have something to eat. But uh, after we eat, we break up into our groups. And uh, women's group, what is the women's group going over? I'm sorry. Okay. So the women's group will be studying something. You? We just finished up... Uh, Making Jesus known, so to be, de to be determined. All right, so for the ladies and for the youth, it's it's luck of the draw, but it'll be good. It'll be good. And uh, and, and guys, uh, what are we going over? Revelation. No, we've already done that. We finished that. We finished it. We finished it. I don't know. Where do you want to go? Hamburger helper. Yeah. Hamburger helper. <laughs> Hamburger helper. No, uh, guys, we will uh, we will definitely uh, have a lesson in place as well. So I think all three of us finished up our lessons last week, so we're in a transition. But we will have the classes, and they will be fun. And uh, they, it's always an opportunity to learn. It's always an opportunity to have open discussion. I mean, you know, that's uh, that's the one thing that I, I really enjoy about Wednesdays is the fact that. Uh, it is an open setting and it is open conversation and we actually get to hear what's going on in, in each other's lives and we get to see how scripture directly affects us. I mean, I really enjoyed going over Genesis. We went over the first three chapters of Genesis and the last four chapters of Revelation. I really enjoyed doing that with y'all because, you know, there's, a, there's an understanding that comes with the fact that God started us in one place. He's going to finish us in another, but his plan is taking place this entire time. Um, so there, there is something to be said for that. Um, and uh, as a matter of fact, men, we're going to go into the book of Judges. That's what we're going to be going over. We'll be going over the book of Judges. And I want you to remember an acronym for me. It's SWORD, S-W-O-R-D, Sin, Wrath, Oppression, right? Repentance and Deliverance, S-W-O-R-D. That is every single chapter in the book of Acts. Or not Acts, I'm sorry. Every single chapter in uh, Judges. Judges. And uh, we will we will go over that. Um, Saturday, do we have anything going on Saturday? Laundry ministry. Laundry ministry. This Saturday we're going to be over at the laundry, uh, laundry mat across from Only Guacamole next to the gas station at noon. It's a great ministry gives you an opportunity to see what is going on with our homeless brothers and sisters. You know, so many times we, we just forget. Um, I think back to the to the times when I was running a bar downtown and everything else, I never even noticed the homeless. And then when I, I came to know Christ and I, I got into a different place in my life, I was like, man, this is really an issue down here. And it, and it, and it struck me and it, and it hit home with me and it, and it bothered me. And uh, so, you know, it allows us to see what's going on in their lives, and it allows us to, to let them know that they are valuable. You know what I mean? They, they, they carry value. They carry value. They're part of God's creation. They, they carry the same amount of value as myself, the same amount of value as you. They're no less, no more. So um, it is a, a great ministry. And then Sunday we will be back here um, on May the 4th. May the 4th be with us. Uh, on the 4th, we will be doing uh, Project Projects. And uh, again, that's a lot of fun. I encourage each and every one of us to uh, to take care of that. So did I forget anything? Or is there anything that anyone else needs to add to our announcements this week? Going once, going twice. Uh-oh, there it is. Whoop, whoop. So, all right. Well, guys, I don't know about you, but 
Uh, every day I wake up and I have to pick out a hat that matches my shoes. I like matching. I'm serious. It's 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 weird. Like if I'm wearing green shoes, I've got to find a green hat. If I'm wearing blue shoes, I've got to wear a blue hat. If I'm wearing red and black shoes, I've got to wear a red and black hat. And the shorts got to match and everything else. I like to match. I like to I like things to match on me. And, and you know, it goes way beyond our clothing because I think that we all have a, a a desire to to look good when we walk out the door. But we also have to remember that. God is asking us to do the same thing with our words and with our actions. Our words and our actions need to match. It needs to be just as important as our shoes and our hat every day when we wake up. Because if our, our, our actions don't match our words, what the world sees is they see a skewed view of what being a disciple of Christ is. So if our words match our actions, they're like, okay, well, that's what someone who believes in Christ, that's what they look like and that's what they're supposed to be. But if our words and our actions look different, what they see is they see, oh, well, all you have to do is talk a good game. You don't have to, to live it. You just have to talk it. I can do that. Well, the fact of the matter is being a disciple of Christ is difficult. Being a disciple of Christ is hard because we are asked to live it, not just to talk it. See, there's going to come a day where the talkers receive exactly what they've earned, and that is eternal damnation. And then there's going to be a day where those that, that know Christ, they're going to receive what they didn't earn. Amen. Ah, and that is eternal salvation because we know that our salvation is yoked to Christ and we receive that through grace, not through our works. But once we receive that grace, our actions should look different. Scripture tells us that we become a whole new creation and a new creation can't be the old creation. It has to be something new. I want to go to 1 Peter chapter 3 today. We're going to be starting with, with verse 13. And it says, Now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? Okay, so zealous. That's a that's a fancy, fancy word. You hear it a lot, but a lot of times we don't know what zealous means. Zealous is actually just being enthusiastic while pursuing a cause or an objective. So we are enthusiastic about blank. You know, we are enthusiastic about money. So we can be zealous about money. If, if that is our top priority and that is what consumes us, we are zealous about money. So everything is focused on money, 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 money. How do I invest? How do I work? How do I get more hours? Where can I get more money? What can I do? It's money, 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 money. We can be zealous over, over it. If, if every day you turn on your phone and the first thing you look at is pornography, odds are you're zealous about sex. I'm serious. That is your main priority. You were enthusiastic. We, uh, those of us that were unfortunate enough to, to be in addiction, there was a time where we were zealous about drugs. Seriously. When that last 30 was out of my pocket, I was very zealous about finding more. I was very enthusiastic about getting more of that into my system. People are zealous about power. How do they gain more power? How do they achieve more power? People are zealous about the approval of other people. People work so hard to be approved by other people. And these are people that aren't even in the kingdom of God. These are just random people. And what that person is actually zealous for is just accolades, and approval. People are zealous about peace, but go about it in the wrong way. If you're searching for peace and that is your main objective and you're enthusiastically looking for peace, you're, you're zealous about peace, the cause of peace, yet you're not finding your peace through Christ, you're finding your peace through, oh gosh, I don't know, there's, there's so many, John Maxwell, for example, I don't know, he's got five points to do everything in your life. If you have all his books, there's five ways to get to everywhere you need to be. There's, there's, there's people that are, are zealous about all kinds of things, but Jesus is saying right here, who is there to harm you if you are zealous about what is good? And if we know what is good, we can be zealous for it. Jesus is good. God's creation is good. Those of us that just got finished with 
we, we, with Genesis, we realize that after every part of creation, what did God say? God said, it is good. He was zealous about his creation. He was zealous about the good things. So what the first line of this scripture says is, if you are zealous about me, there is nothing that can harm you. If your desire is me, there is nothing that can harm you. Why is that? Why is it that nothing can harm us if we're zealous about Jesus? Nothing can harm us if we're zealous about Jesus because he's already defeated everything that could possibly harm us. Amen. He has defeated death. He has defeated the world. He has defeated evil. He has defeated his enemies. Jesus has already won the battle and he's saying if you yoke yourself to me, if you are zealous about me, if you enthusiastically pursue me as much as you enthusiastically pursue these other things, there is nothing that can harm you. Well, that right there, one of the things that I said we could be zealous about was peace. Tony Robbins can't tell me that nothing can harm me if I'm zealous about him. Ask the woman who got her feet all burned up when he asked her to walk across the burning coals. Ask the woman that almost died in the sweat tent that Tony Robbins so that they could reach an epiphany. See, humans can't give us that. There's no human on earth that can protect me from everything that could possibly come my way. But God can. Amen. So if I'm going to say that I belong to God, then my actions should resemble or my actions should show that I do love God and that I am zealous and I'm enthusiastically seeking him. Does that mean that I'm perfect all the time? No. See, that's the beautiful thing about the God that I'm zealous for. It's the God that I'm zealous for shows me grace. When I fall down and I do the things that I shouldn't do, God is there. But he's also installed a system called the Holy Spirit, also fully God, that lets me know that I am in the wrong. He stirs my spirit in a way that says, hey, you're not going the way that you're supposed to. You're going after something other than Christ. You need to get back on track because your words are not matching your actions. And then he says, but even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, say, righteousness sake, Paul suffered for righteousness sake. Paul was put in jail because he was zealous for the Lord. And he let everybody know. The Roman Empire did not like that because it didn't fit into their box. And he was imprisoned. But the thing is, that does not mean that there was a contradiction there. Because being put in jail did not harm Paul. While Paul was in jail, the guards that watched over him became believers and became to know Christ. He gained favor with everyone other than Nero. He gained favor with everyone. His friends were allowed to come visit him in jail. There was even a time where he was allowed to leave the jail, go around the city, do the business he needed to do, and then he would basically come back in and lock his cell up like the dude on Andy Griffin. I can't remember his name, but uh, Otis. Oh, I should know that. That's my dog's name. That's my dog's name. But uh, so even Paul, when he was locked up, he didn't suffer he turned that into an opportunity to allow his words and his actions to match. Here he is in jail and he's like, it doesn't matter. I still love Jesus. You can close that door. And I'm going to tell you about him more. And I'm going to tell you about him more. And then they came and they were like, well, please tell us more. You will be blessed. Have no fear of them nor be troubled. But in your hearts, honor them. Christ the Lord is holy. I just want you to think in your head about the opportunities that you have had this week. This week. I'm not, I'm not asking you to go deep, deep, deep into the mind or into your memory because if you're anything like me, memory is not your strong suit. <laughs> of course, there's many reasons that that could be. It's because I grew up under power lines. I'm going to stick to that story. Just kidding. Just kidding. But how many times this week have you had an opportunity to glorify Christ, to tell someone about Christ, to do something that, that shows your love for Christ, 
Yet you took calls or you didn't do it because you were worried about what someone was going to say. You were worried about the agnostic in the meeting. You were worried about the atheist at your job site. You were worried that you would, you would, you would, you would offend the homosexual. You were, you were scared that, uh, that, that someone would look at you funny because they don't believe the way that you believe. Scripture is telling us right here to have no fear of them nor be troubled. There is nothing that any of those groups can do to you. The groups are not just limited to that. The, the, the list is long. But there is nothing that they can do to you because you are protected by the Lord. However, we need to be mindful as to how we present these things. If we look back and we look at history and we look at the Sadducees, the Pharisees, and the Sanhedrin and the, the, the powers that were within the Jewish community, they held themselves up on a pedestal. Well, I'm going to be the first to tell you that there's no reason for me to be on a pedestal. I belong down here. And I'm going to tell you this too. There's no reason for you to be on a pedestal either. The one that belongs on a pedestal is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are people. We are all in the same boat, and there is not one better than the other. And every single one of the groups that I said that you were worried about, guess what? If you had said the words that you were afraid to say, it could have changed a life. It could have opened a door into someone's heart. It could have allowed someone to experience Jesus in a new way. It could have allowed someone to see that there truly is love within the kingdom of God because those that put themselves on a, path, on a pedestal, oftentimes they speak down at people as opposed to to people. They don't lead from the ground. They try to lead from the air, and it is an impossibility. See, because what I would tell each of those groups is, I love the atheists. I love the agnostics. I love the person that believes differently than me, and I love the homosexual. Because they are all part of God's creation, and they are all people. Amen. And I can't change any of those things about them. Just like they can't change the fact that I've got anger issues at times. Just like they can't change the fact that every now and then a cuss word leaves my mouth. Just like they can't change the negative things about me that are contrary to God, yet they still love me. What makes that sin greater than the other? See, but if I demonstrate the love of Christ, which is what we're called to do, I can talk to them and we can do it in a civil way where Jesus can be presented and the Holy Spirit can start to do his work. And if you don't believe me, the very next line says, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone ask you for a reason for the hope that is in you. The hope that is in me, I have it because of Jesus Christ. I have the hope and the belief that I'm going to live a long life because I have prayed and I have heard and Jesus has let me know that I will have a long life. I'm confident in saying that, that the ministries that we have are going to succeed and they're going to excel, not because of me, but because they have been appointed to us, they've been given to us through Christ, and we know that through him, they will be successful. The reason for my joy, the reason for my, for, for my hope is Jesus Christ. And if your hope and your, your faith is laying, lying in anything other than Jesus Christ, you're going to be disappointed. And the thing is, I don't know when I'm going to see the things that he has promised, but I know they're coming. See, you can wait all day long on a person. You can wait for years, and a person has no problem not honoring what they do. But God will not violate his character because it does more harm to him than it would to you. So we have a reasonable answer, a defense as to why we have hope. Our hope is Jesus. Our hope is the things that Jesus does. My hope is not the things that I do because the things that I do are jacked up. See, but when I present those things, 
to someone who believes differently, to someone who, who, who is suffering, someone who is, is hurting. What God has told me to do in the very next line is yet do it with gentleness and respect. I understand to an extent the atheist. The reason that I understand the atheist is because before my last overdose, I was an atheist. Therefore, I can sit down and talk to an atheist in a manner that lets him see that, that my belief, my hope, my, my, my faith is grounded in logic. It's not grounded in imaginary things, and it's not grounded in falsehoods. It's grounded in truth, and the truth lies in my testimony. And if I come to him or her in a spirit of gentleness and a spirit of respect, they will hear me. And they will be able to see the things that have occurred. Now from there they can make their own decision. But at least we got to present it. At least it didn't get to the point where we yelled back and forth. Because that does nothing. We have to know our audience. And we have to understand that we're not that different. We're just suffering from different things. We're suffering from different ailments. We're suffering from different levels of sin. Different types of sin. But it is all the same in the eyes of God. One sin is not greater than the other. There is no sliding scale. There is no number one and there is no number ten. It is all the same. So if nothing else, there's my common ground to sit and talk to any one of those people. You know, I go through it too. I have things that bother me. I have things that I struggle with. But man. Through Christ, I've been able to deal with these things. And that's all I want for you, brother. That's all I want. I just want to see you fulfilled. I just want to see you happy. I want to see you receive joy. And I want you to, to receive that peace. You can say that to anyone. And if anyone refutes that, they just don't want to be happy. <laughs> Well, I don't want that. Well, okay, that's fine. Go be angry. <laughs> but you see, it falls on us to direct the way that that conversation is going to go. Because we do live in a time where if we disagree with something, we automatically become the enemy. Just because maybe maybe we have a, a difference in views as far as as far as things that uh, lifestyles and. And, and ways of living just because we have differences of opinion on that automatically oh they hate me they're a bunch of hate mongers yeah, hate mongers oh gosh that's just uh, that's a trip I mean it, it's it's a falsehood that's been portrayed about the church it's not a bunch of hate mongers now there is uh, there is people that, that maybe don't understand there's people that sometimes that are, are, are not Educated as far as you know, scripture goes. There are sometimes people that go off half cocked and speak out of anger as opposed to speaking out of love. But we're called to speak with a spirit of gentleness and a spirit of respect. And as long as we do that, we can talk to anyone and we can give a good, good, good testimony of Jesus Christ and what He's done in our lives. That gentleness and respect is what allows the people to see that we are living and that our words do match our actions. Guess what? I love Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. He is. And you know what? Even though that cuss word leaves my mouth every now and then, he still loves me. Yeah. It doesn't make what I did right. I'm not saying that at all. It doesn't give me an excuse. And it's not something that I should do just because I know that I'm going to be forgiven. Because then I'm abusing grace. However, he does love me. And you know what? Maybe letting that word slip out of my mouth, maybe that's not the most Christian thing to do. Well, I'm probably not the most Christian person in the world. I want to meet the most Christian person in the world. I really do because I hear that all the time. I hear, well, that's not very Christian of you. <laughs> Well, okay. <laughs> what, who made that book? I, that's the book I want to find. But when we speak out of gentleness and respect and we speak out of love, 
they know that our words match our actions. Because if you really want to look at the words of this Bible and you really want to look at the words that came out of Jesus' mouth, that's what they were. They were words of love. They were words of instruction. They were words of power. They were words of victory. We speak that. Now we have to live it. And the way that we handle ourselves around others is a big, big part of it. Verse 16 goes on to say, having a good conscience so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. It's hard for me to talk on this one because no one's ever said anything bad about me. I would say no one in this room has said anything bad about me, but as I look around, I see about 10 of y'all that run your mouth all the time. Just not to me. Sure are glad to put it on Facebook, though, aren't you? Oh, keyboard warriors, you. Well, I'll tell you this. You know why you don't get responses when you put stuff like that on Facebook from me? You know why you don't get responses when you say those things about me to other people and they come and tell me? Because they'd always come and tell me, by the way. Yeah. <clears throat> you want to know why? Number one, God has blessed me with a spirit of not caring. I don't care what you say. Okay? Because the same person that talks bad about me is also the same person that's going to be in my office next week asking me for help. Let your character speak for you. Say it louder for people in the back. <laughs> people in the back, let your character speak for you. When your character speaks for you, you don't have to defend yourself. Because everyone around that person who is who is slandering, everyone who is who is uh, speaking bad about you or about the things that you do, everyone around them is like, that's not true. I know that person. And that's not just me. That's you too. That's you too. If you dedicate your life to the love of Christ and demonstrate that love of Christ, people can say what they want to. And you will not have to say a word to defend yourself because the spirit inside of you is already spoken. Amen. And I love that line, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. The thing about it is we don't even have to put them to shame. It's their own words that put them to shame. Amen. See, part of our words matching our actions is not getting involved in that petty stuff. That is stuff of the world. That is stuff of the world. The memes, the, 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 the posts, the... The, the backstabbing, the backbiting, the talking behind people's back. All of that is things of the world. If you want to know what a man or a woman who, who, who knows the Lord does, they do it the right way. If they have a problem, number one, they come face to face and they talk to that person. And if that doesn't work, they get the elders of the church and they talk between them and they try to come up with a solution. And if that doesn't work, they bring it before the whole church. Because that's how we handle things in the kingdom of God. And that's why the world handles the things the way that they do, because they don't understand the things of God. But through our actions and through our words, if they match, we can be a big part of change. And the way that he closes it out here, he says, For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. Guys, there are times that we may have to suffer. We have been blessed to be in the United States of America. Are we a perfect country? No. Is it going to look even more imperfect this year? Absolutely. We're getting ready to have a clown show of an election, folks. Um, and look, I'm not saying that behind anyone's back. I've got a camera right in front of me. The, both candidates. <laughs> wow. I mean, uh, give us a choice, please. Because if we're going to vote with our hearts and we're going to vote with our conscience, right now it's just like, what, who, how? I'll vote for my 
No, no, no. We're not going to talk about who we're voting for. I'm just saying. And I'm not, I don't mean that in a bad way, but you see, what, who we're going to vote for isn't important here because when we talk about who we're going to vote for, what happens is 50% of the people get divided. We're weird, divided right down the middle as a country, and there's no doubt about that. But what I'm saying is, as a country, we've been blessed with the fact that we get to come out here, we get to speak our gospel, we get to share Jesus Christ, we have the freedom of speech to do so, and we don't suffer for it. There's other countries where this is different. In China, they have to have underground churches. In Russia, they'll put you to death for speaking about Christ. You go to a Muslim country, don't even think about it. Tortured, imprisoned, killed. We've been blessed that we have not had to suffer like some other people have. But can I say that the future, I mean, you know, I don't know what the future holds. There may be a day where we do have to suffer for sharing the word of God. But the eternal promises of God are so much better than any suffering that we could have here. It doesn't even compare. So what I want us to do this week is I want us to go out and I want us to look at our words and I want us to look at our actions and I want us to look at our fears. I want us to become vocal. And when I say vocal, I don't mean radical. I'm not trying to radicalize the church. But when you have it and it's in your head and it's in your heart, maybe I should say, and you bite your lip because you're worried about what so-and-so is going to think, let it fly. If it's glorifying God, let it fly. Because that is what we are. We are glorifiers. We are projectors of his image. We are, we are a people that have been set apart as holy to do his mission. So this week, as we go out of here, let's go and let's complete his mission. Matthew chapter 28 lays the mission out beautifully. To share the gospel with the entire world and baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So let's go out this week and let's share Christ in a meaningful way with all people. Because if we, we don't share it with the, the people that we are afraid might be offended, what we're doing is we're actually discriminating against them. We're withholding the greatest gift that they could ever receive because we in our minds, think that they aren't going to get it. They might. They might. So let's be vocal, let's be strong, but above all, let's do these things with a spirit of gentleness and respect so that we can be heard as opposed to being shut out. See, there's, there's many ways to win an argument and lose a disciple. Y'all have heard me say that before. And when you're brash, when you're when you're 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 you're, 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 you're stuck, and you you don't demonstrate the love, it's you know my way or the highway. Well, first off, it's not your way, because no one in this room wrote any, not even a tittle, to steal from the words of Jesus. No one in here even wrote a tittle of scripture. We're called to follow it, not bend it, not mold it, not shape it. We're called to live it. So let's go out and let's live our scripture this week. Let's speak from a place of gentleness and respect, but let's share the gospel with everyone, no matter what their background, no matter where they are now, because I guarantee that the blood of Christ is more than sufficient, more than sufficient to do all things. Y'all dig? All right. We have the prayer request. Y'all really did kill it today in praise and worship, though. I mean, seriously. Yes. Yeah, it, it's it's crazy. If y'all ever watch, uh, you know some of the things that happen in Israel. Um, God's hand is, is on Israel right now, and it's uh, it's amazing. I, I I watched it, and I mean, look, it's easy to get tricked by the internet nowadays. Believe me, it really is. There's all kinds of stuff out there, and they make it look so real. But uh, and I saw I saw one the other day though. It was some rockets that were coming. Right in, and this is this was footage from a couple of years ago, but the rockets were coming right in. They started to come down, and it's almost like 
It looks like the Kim David Tumbo like smacked it. It was almost like God said, no, 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 no. But uh, those missiles turned right out to the sea and just boom. So, uh, so God's here. His hand is here. His hand is upon you. And um, I know that we can go out and I know that we can fight this good fight. As far as uh, prayer requests for this week, uh, Brenda Harrison, uh, Lemon, am I right? And Lemon? Yeah. Praise God. I thought it was a misprint, but Lemon, uh, Penny Laws, 180 people, the homeless, uh, Nikki and myself, Shirley and Craig, uh, our church uh, members, the unspoken, unsaved, and be in prayer for Athena. Chris, Tara, Jessica, Nathan, uh, all nation, uh, Israel, um, Justin Pruitt, and uh, Brent Rourke, be in prayer for Israel, be in prayer for uh, Desi, uh, De Desiree Delaney, I just called her Desi, because <laughs> that's what I'm used to calling her, uh, and uh, Taylor family, uh, their mama passed, and guys, be in prayer for me, please. I, I'm just going to ask. Uh, I ask y'all every week to pray for each other. I feel like it's a bad example if I don't ask y'all for prayer. Guys, please pray for me. Uh, I just pray that you uh, pray pray for me. Pray for, for strength this week. Uh, it takes a lot to, to try to do what we're doing. And, uh, so I could really use prayer and uh, I could really use some strength. And uh, if y'all can do that, I'd appreciate it. And uh, we'll be in prayer for each and every one of y'all. Uh, so let's go ahead and close it out. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the time and the ability to be here, to share your word, to share your spirit, and to fill you in, in a way that is meaningful, in a way that is powerful, Lord. Lord, as we go out today, let us uh, live our lives in accordance to your will. Let us remember that it's your will, not our will. And uh, let us always give you glory. And let us always understand that you have never left us. You have never abandoned us. You have not forsaken us. You are right by our side. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. Amen. Play driving. Follow Tissy.